Hi everyone, I'm Brian Clark. Welcome to another Recording Dojo. This time, I wanna give you three tips to help you get your best recording tone yet. Tighten up your belts, the dojo is now open. In my experience, the best way to get great recordings begins with getting in tune with your inner ear and the tones that you're hearing in your head. This understanding will act as a catalyst for the first important tip, choice and placement of microphones. As simple as this is, we run the risk of listening with our eyes instead of our ears because we're creatures of habit. How many times have you placed the same mic in the same place on the same amp or the same place at the guitar for acoustic players? Did you really explore all the possibilities or was this the best solution at the time and now it's become ingrained? Maybe it's time to rethink the process and try something new. Regular Dojo members are already familiar with the three most common microphones used in recording, condenser, ribbon, and dynamic. There's others, but these are the most common. Regardless of what mics you have, use your ears and listen to the source that you wanna record. For example, listen not only to where the amp sounds best at the speaker, but also in the room. For acoustic guitar, placing the mics near the 14th fret in addition to other locations can yield a wide variety of tones. If you're recording by yourself, make several different short recordings and document the mic placement for each. Listen, and then make decisions. The idea here is that you wanna get the sound that you're looking for without using any EQ. In short, if you don't like the sound that you're getting, move the mics until you do. As you can see, I've laid out three different microphones in various locations to try to get a different take on this ex audio example that I'm about to play. Uh, what I have is an SM57, about two and a half inches off of the grill, and it's right where the dust cap meets the cone, right in that little area of doping. Then we have about two and a half, three feet away, I've got a ribbon mic here that's relatively close to the floor, so it's going to get a little bass and, uh, and a little more body. And then I added another ribbon mic that's really far away, and this one is going to give much more of a room sound. It's also picking up behind and in front. It's a figure eight pattern that it's set for. So let me play this little audio example now, and then we'll listen to the differences, figure out which one we like, and then look at the gain structure. recording by yourself and you're moving the mic, making a recording, moving the mic, making another recording and so on and so forth, each time set up a new track so that way you can always monitor your recording levels to make sure that they're hitting somewhere between that negative 5 and negative 15 ballpark. So I'm just going to hit play on this because there's three tracks here. I've got them muted. All we really want to look at is where it's showing up. So let's check it out. As you can see, all of the levels for each of those three versions are all hitting in that sweet spot, roughly. So I know I'm in a good spot in getting the best signal to noise ratio. A quick break to thank our sponsor for Recording Dojo, Astrope Cables. Astrope Pro Audio Cables are trusted by artists and producers across the globe and feature a unique technology that delivers unsurpassed performance with an aesthetic and rugged design. You can learn more and buy their cables directly at astrope.com. Now back to the dojo. Once the decision has been made, the second tip for making better recordings is to pay careful attention to your gain structure, also known as your recording level. You want to give yourself plenty of headroom, and the best way to do this is to set the recording track's fader in your DAW to unity, or zero. And then adjust your preamp's gain level until the signal meters somewhere between negative 15 and negative 5 for most DAWs. Check your specific DAW to find out which VU metering type you're using. If you're somewhere in this range, you'll have a good signal to noise ratio, ample headroom for loud passages, like when you kick in the overdrive channel for the chorus or the solo sections. Take a look at this image. 
A scenario like this has bad news written all over it. The track faders are pushed up near the top of their range and the master bus has already peaked. This can happen quicker than you think if you didn't set your input levels properly to begin with, as previously mentioned. If you find yourself in this type of predicament, you're gonna need to recalibrate your gain structure for every track of the entire mix. Ouch, that's a lot of wasted time. The last and final tip is to be able to use EQ and compression in very subtle ways. The way that I usually like to do things is to roll off low end rumble, particularly in the sub bass territory. Because believe it or not, even an SM57 or any type of microphone will pick up a lot of harmonic information that's below 60 Hertz. So here's what I'm gonna do now. I've got on screen the SM57 version, and this is just a frozen moment in time, but you can see here that there's quite a lot of information below 50 Hertz. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a high pass filter with a relatively steep octave, and I'm basically gonna just get rid of some of that. So now when I hit play, even though we won't hear it, you'll be able to see how much I'm attenuating below 50 Hertz. So this area here is what was originally there, and this is how much is there now in purple. That type of EQing will free up the low end information for your bass and your kick drum, and if you have a synth that's doing sub stuff or any type of really low end information, you're scooping the guitars out of the way of that, and that's gonna make your mixes even better. As always, if you have any questions, you can reach me at recordingdojo at premierguitar.com. I also want to invite you to check out my new single, Christian Graffiti, on your favorite music platform to hear all of these tips in action. Until next time, namaste.